Hello everybody, welcome to Friday. We're obviously not doing a live Talk Money with Tom show today, uh, but I did want to do a summary for the week just because this has been such a fantastic week to kind of understand what's happening, look at these inflation reports that have come out and what have you too, and uh, really uh, fascinating things that are happening in my opinion. So I'll, I'll share some of those with you. So if we start here, uh, here's the S&P 500, right? From the beginning of last year, coming down. Now we've broken this trend line. We've had the golden cross with the 50-day moving average, that gold uh, line there moving through the blue line, the 200-day moving average, et cetera. We've had a couple weeks here, though, where we've pulled back some. Now, honestly, with the huge run that we had in January, having a pullback for a few weeks is no big deal. I mean, that'd be normal in any particular market. But the reasons for it, are somewhat concerning here because we're starting to see kind of inflation and some of the things uh, that are showing a hotter economy kind of perk up. Uh, you know, we already know from previous reports that we had 517,000 jobs created in January. It was a huge number. Uh, and now this week we found out that we have a 3%, you know, uh, jump in uh, retail sales for January, which was a really big number too. So. People are spending, people are getting out there, they're getting jobs, you know, things are happening. And again, most of the times those are really good things. But in an inflationary environment uh, where people are worried about what the Federal Reserve is going to do here, it does concern them. And so you see here, if we look at kind of the five minute chart for the S&P 500 for the week, uh, you know, we're down again for the week, but we can see the big drop there on Thursday. And that came because one of the Fed governors came out and said, hey, you know, a half a point increase seems okay to me. Uh, and that kind of scared the market. We had maybe seven or eight different uh, Fed governor, you know, uh, or president interviews, speeches, what have you. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, all have been fairly negative, and of course the market's down in that time frame. Again, could just be a pullback from the big run-up we have, but there are some reasons the Fed is coming out and saying these things. So for example, on Tuesday, and let me switch to a view maybe we can see a little bit better. On Tuesday, the CPI report came out, uh, and here is CPI year over year. So this January compared to last January of last year, up 6.4%. So that's high, right, still, but coming down actually overall, right? Hit that peak back in July. So that looks good, except for the month over month. So the month over month is kind of coming up there, and you can see that's at 0.52. If you multiply that times 12 to annualize it, that's 6%. That's still kind of high, still has some concerns, makes the market worry a little bit about what the Fed will do. Fed, of course, looks at core inflation. And so this is the year-over-year year year core inflation where they take out food and energy. That's at 5.55%. Again, coming down from that peak, looks like a good trend. Uh, but unfortunately, when you look at it month over month, uh, you know, we have had a couple months here with an increase, and we're at 0.41. If you recall from last week, I was showing you that the Cleveland Fed puts out a thing called a NowCast as a projection for for both CPI and PCE, which are two different measures of inflation. And they said it was going to be 0.46, so pretty close as far as that goes. And if you look at what the projections are now, and this is just updated today, uh, I put little red arrows by the ones that are all going to be higher than the month before on a projected basis, both for PCE, which is the measure that will come out here at the end of this month for next month. That inflation measure is really the Fed's favored measure. Again, we're seeing increases here. Now, these are projections. Maybe the real numbers come out and they're different, uh, but the market does react to these projections. So this is you know, kind of what the market's doing here as far as that goes. I mean, we have to be somewhat cognizant of that. And we've seen, of course, the bond market react to this first. Uh, and I was a little bit surprised because the bond market was kind of reacting uh, you know, to these numbers and the stock market was going the other direction. It was actually going up a little bit for the first part of the week. Uh, and then it finally fell down. I think the bond market leads the stock market in an inflationary environment like this. And that's why we spend so much time talking about the two-year Treasury yield. And you can see here, you know, we had this nice decrease going on with that blue line that's in there. And we broke back up. And now we're, you know, we're not all the way back to the high that we set back in um, October, November timeframe. But we're back to 4.6% yield on the two-year Treasury. And of course, the futures market, which is kind of projecting where the Fed might end up by July. They're saying now five and a quarter, which is the highest you know, projection we've seen. Uh, and so, you know, these are things that 
that the stock market is digesting and, and, and looking at and what have you. And so, you know, what do you do? I mean, how do you handle a market like this in an environment like this where inflation might be continuing back up again or at least staying sticky or however you might want to look at that? Well, there are pieces that are showing strength here. And on Monday, we did some rotations, uh, and Tuesday actually, uh, into utility stocks, high dividend paying stocks, and energy stocks. Energy didn't do well so far this week, but we still like it in this environment. Utility did fantastic. High dividend stocks did, uh, you know, in between. And so that worked out fairly well. I think there's still some strength in infrastructure stocks that we're seeing out there, large value, small value. So those are things that, you know, you continue to look at in an environment like this, uh, they'll either, you know, hopefully outperform, you know, the overall market or even make money even in a down market like the utilities did uh, this week. So we'll see how that plays out. The bond market, of course, uh, short-term treasuries, uh, short-term uh, tips, uh, treasury inflation protection securities, and inverse positions are what we're using in the bond market. Those did really well this week altogether. Uh, so. Those are things that we rotated into, you know, just to kind of deal with this particular environment. Who knows how long this continues? You know, this market seems to go from one news event to the next and kind of react to that. Uh, because we, you know, we are all looking at these things and trying to figure out what's going to happen. In the end, the market is worried that these inflationary situations are going to cause the Fed to overraise rates and then cause a recession that would be bigger than we really maybe need to to bring down the inflationary environment. So I do think here you have to be kind of light on your feet. Uh, if you're just going to sit there and go through this, you know, we don't know how that might work out. So we want to respond when things get, uh, you know, really good, like they were in January and kind of ride that uh, like we did. And then you want to maybe get more defensive now as things start to pop up, you know, in the inflationary area and the stock market starts to show some weakness here. So anyway, that's what was happening this week. Uh, you know, really look forward to being able to see you again next week. We'll do the next, you know, uh, daily summary video on Tuesday. Uh, thank you very much.